this video covers nomenclature or names. For plants, we have two types of names. We have the common names, which most arborists and most lay people will know. And then you have scientific or botanical names, which is a very specific system used in science. Let's use coast live oak as an example. This is a native California species, and the common name is useful in that it gives you quite a bit of information. You have coast, which indicates that this tree is found more in coastal regions, and you have live oak which indicates that this is a evergreen tree, not a deciduous one. But I have heard the species referred to with, diff with multiple different names. I've heard it called a scrub oak, I've heard it called just a live oak, and those two common names also refer to other species. But this is a, a easily accessible name. Um, most clients will know some kind of common name as and as long as there aren't very many common names for that species you'll probably be on the same page but in like in this example that i just gave if someone told me they had a scrub oak i really don't know what that species is so that's where the benefit of the scientific or botanical name comes in it's, it looks weird, right? It looks a lot more complicated than the common name because most of these names are Latin. Not all of them. They can be based in other languages or they may be based on other people's names. But in general, it looks totally different from English. So these have two parts to the name. You have the genus and you have the specific epithet. This specific system of naming is called binomial nomenclature. There are two parts to this name. It's kind of like having a first name and a last name. All species only has have one active scientific name. They may have some old names that are no longer in use because maybe they were reclassified when it was discovered that they're more closely related to another species or another genus than they expected. So you'll find these listed as synonyms. So here's a list of the pros and cons of using the common name or the scientific name. With the common name, as I mentioned already, it's very easy to learn. It's just whatever language you speak. But the problem is that each plant or tree may have multiple common names and there are no rules dictating how you dis decide what name it's given. And some of these common names also seem to indicate relationships that are, don't actually exist. So as an example, this, these two common names, the she-oak and Australian pine, both refer to a species in the genus Casuarina. You can understand where it gets the Australian pine name because it looks like it has pine needles, but those are not actually needles. Those are stems and the actual leaves are really, really small bracts. And it's actually more closely related to an oak than it is a pine. So you have these very, these highly variable names and my coworkers who practice in the exact same area that I do will have a different name for a specific plant. So you can see that it starts to get very confusing. With the benefit of the scientific name is that you have one name per plant internationally. Everyone has agreed upon this one name and so even if you're working in a different country and you're looking at literature that is in another language, they will still have the scientific name. This handbook that's specifically about Hong Kong plants and it's all in Chinese, they still have the name in Latin and so I can look up this exact tree and know what they're talking about. And the names can also be descriptive. So another oak that's na native to my area, the valley oak, the scientific name is Quercus lobata. And so lobata refers to its lobed leaves. Negatives are that it's definitely harder to learn. It gets easier with time because it's like another language. And once you learn those, if 
the plant gets reclassified, the name may change and then you'll have to learn a new name. Um, and in terms of practice, the worst part about using the scientific name is even if you have really great intentions and you would like to use the scientific name only, when you go to a nursery, um, sometimes they haven't changed from the old scientific name yet. And so they're using an outdated synonym. And so you really need to understand where you find these names in order to identify exactly which plant you're looking for. And in some cases, people may not know the scientific names at all. So my recommendation is to learn both and use the common name in regular practice. But anytime you put something in writing like an arborist report, it's good to know the scientific name.